The day after a late night 510 session, I visit a place called Samsuni, located in Richmond. I haven't been here for a while, but I remember that their signature pork bong ramen was really good. I contemplated whether to order the ramen or try something new. I settled with the katsudon as it looked really good in the photos. The actual dish was indeed presented beautifully. The portion was huge and could be easily shared between two people. So I have to say that the value was really good. And the pork bone soup is comforting as always. After finishing everything and getting into a food coma, I reflect back on my poker session from yesterday. For my very first hand, I post a big blind and I get dealt pocket jacks. Low jack raises to $35 and the high jack calls. Everyone else folds and I bump it up to $150. The low jack then 4 bets to $425 and the high jack folds. This is when I realized I had just come from a 2-5 table and didn't even have time to properly top up my chips yet. So my stack was at around $1300 which is a little bit short in this game. And if I call this bet, I am basically committing to it with a pot size bet on the flop. So I was just thinking about either folding or shoving all in. I didn't feel like going too crazy for my first hand, as my best case scenario facing a 4 bet is against Ace King, which even then is just a coin flip. So I start the session with folding pocket jacks pre flop. My next interesting hand is again pocket jacks, but this time at the cutoff. There is one limper and I raise it to $40. The button 3 bets to $100. The small blind 4 bets to $300. And it folds to me. Here I am again facing a 4 bet with pocket jacks. This time though, my decision is much easier because there's still a player acting after me. I don't even close the action here. And the 4 better raise with 3 people behind. Basically it's 99% aces or kings. I just let it go. And it was later revealed that he did indeed have pocket kings. dead and not really hitting much for a while, I pick up pocket aces in the big blind. It starts with an under the gun straddle of $20. Everyone folds to the small blind who calls and I raise it to $80. The big blind calls and the small blind folds. The flop comes ace king eight rainbow and I hit top set. I lead out with a small bet of $50 and the villain calls. The turn card is another ace, and I hit quads, which is overkill. I lead out again for $100, just hoping the villain picked up any kind of draw. He doesn't, and ends up folding. And I realize leading out the turn was just too strong, even with a small bet. There's no way I don't check it if I wanted to rep no ace. I should have checked the turn and made a small bet on the river, or checked the river to trap. Either way, I messed this one up. This hand, I pick up pocket queens on the button. The hijack opens for $30 and I re-raise to $100. Everyone folds and the hijack calls, so it's heads up to a flop of 10-10-4 rainbow. The villain checks and I decide to check this one back. My thinking is that this is a board that I'm either way ahead or way behind. Typically, there aren't a lot of 10x holdings that calls a 3-bet out of position, aside from pocket 10s or maybe ace-10 suited. So I do think that I'm ahead most of the time. And seeing that there are no draws, I might be able to get two streets of value after checking back. The turn comes a jack of clubs, bringing in a flush draw. The villain checks again as expected, so I now go for a bet of $100. 
The villain surprisingly check raises me to $350. This is quite strong, and the villain is a solid player who is balanced with bluffs. I do beat Ace Jack, and now that there are draws on the turn, I think there are also possibilities of Ace King suited, Ace Queen suited, Queen King suited, and a not so likely 9 8 suited that can check raise after picking up a huge combo draw as well, especially since I underrepped my hand from checking the flop. So I call. The river is a brick. The villain leads out for $575. Not a great spot. The only value hand I can beat is Ace Jack, which I think is very unlikely to bet here. So my queens are really nothing more than a bluff catcher. I'm just really deciding if he missed the draws I mentioned earlier and decided to continue barreling because I showed weakness, or he is holding a 10 or pocket jacks. I count the combos. There are two ace-10 suited and three pocket jacks, which equals five. The ace-king of clubs, ace-queen of clubs, queen-king of clubs, eight-nine of clubs, uh, that equals four, but I somehow talk myself into counting all the ace-x of clubs as well. I call. He shows me the ace-10 of hearts, and that is very well played by the villain. This hand, I pick up pocket kings under the gun. I open to $30, under the gun plus one calls, and middle position three bets to $125. It folds back to me, and I was already thinking about my four bet sizing, but I take a quick peek at plus one stack and realize he is quite short with just $800. So if I do four bet, I think it would be a bit too strong and would fold out his strong hands that just lose to mine, like ace queen, jacks, tens, etc. If I just call though, there's a chance that it might give him enough rope to shove if he happens to have those hands. And if this happens and the middle position cold calls, I would be in the best spot to reshove. All very optimistic, I know, but sometimes you gotta take high risk plays. I just call. Unfortunately, the short stack just calls. The flop comes 3-4-5 rainbow. I check, plus one checks, and the middle position bets $150. I call, likely having the best hand here. The short stack folds. The turn card is a 7. I check again. Not because I think the 7 helped the villain, he did 3 bet after all. But if I lead out, I am really just repping a 6, and I actually don't want to fold out his hands that lose to mine, which are queens, jacks, tens, etc. If he checks back for pot control, I'm quite certain that's what he has, uh, with a tiny chance of aces. And he does check back. The river is an 8. It doesn't change anything, and I'm going to follow through with my plan to value bet. I want the villain to think that I'm taking a stab because I read him as weak with the checkback, but I'm actually trying to get value from all his pocket pairs that lose to mine. I bet $300. He tanks for a little while and makes the call. I table my hand. He stares for a bit and asks what I have. I tell him, and he says I'm good. The very next hand I am dealt what seems to be the favorite of tonight, pocket jacks once again. I am now in the big blind and there's a button straddle for $20. I just call. Under the gun plus one raises to $75. The action folds back to me and I'm pretty sure I have PTSD now with pocket jacks. Paranoid about facing a four bet again, I just call. The flop comes ace king queen and I just check, ready to give up. The villain makes a pot size bet of $150 and that is my luck tonight with Jax. Here are the results of this session. I bought in for $2,500 and cashed out for $1,115. So that's a loss of $1,385. So this session, I was card dead a lot. And for the small pots that I was involved with, a lot of them didn't go my way. I did have some big starting hands. Um, there was pocket aces, which I hit quads with. But I don't think I played it that well. Had I played that hand a little bit better, I really think I could have gotten uh, one more street of value. And then uh, pocket kings, uh, I think I played well. Uh, three times I got pocket jacks and lost all of them. So always put into these tough, impossible spots. Not too surprising with uh, pocket jacks. And then there was the hand with pocket queens. 
which I was put into a bluff catching position and ended up being、uh, wrong with. And that pot was、um, my biggest pot of this session, and it kind of defined how my whole session went. And I think it's nice to be able to share that because、um, it just kind of shows that that's sometimes how it goes.、Um, your whole session can sometimes be defined by one big hand and the decisions you make that hand,、uh, whether it's a big fold or a big call, or even if you hit big and how you play it to maximize your value. And that is it for now. So thank you for watching this episode, and I hope you look forward to the next.